Zoom plus and Facebook. Welcome to an impromptu taking it to the nub. This is your host, Boston Jimmy, today, and I am having an impromptu show tonight because I'm in Los Angeles, California, and I'm sitting here with the owners of a magnificent new cigar lounge called the Continental Cigar Club. I'm sitting here with Adam Duffy and Patrick Potter. So we're going to get into this show. We're going to talk about the Continental Cigar Lounge, and we're also going to talk about the brand to back trading company. trading company. Now, let's start this off. Since I have very little practice at doing this, and we're sitting in a kind of a, a location I'm not familiar with, we're going to start off with Patrick. So, Patrick, what got you the idea to open up a cigar lounge in the middle of a pandemic in Los Angeles, California, as a cigar proprietor? Well, it wasn't planned to be in the middle of a pandemic. When we first started talking about this, it was uh, December of 19. And I had struck together a business plan concept surrounded around this idea, sort of a, you know, a very loose, loose, loose concept from John Wick. Cause you know, I would love, love the movie and you know, the Continental is a cool name and um, Continental Cigar Club was available. Nobody seemed to have a Continental Cigar Club anywhere in the country and that seemed to be good. And then, you know, I just uh, sat down, I had what I, what I originally had was a cigar club concept for Tabac Cigar Company, which it was the beginnings of what became now as the Continental. So the, the overview of, of the Continental's concept was really based on my grandfather's experience being a co-partner with Ed Colpin in the Tinderbox um, International. Um, and so my grandfather was responsible for helping Ed do all of the franchise rollouts in 1951. And what they did was their basic design was they had retail, they had relationships in the manufacturing side, they controlled the, the factory to retailer, taking out the distributor, creating their own version of vertical integration and, um, and was able to stock cigars that they made, not just the brand names that were available. And they found themselves with a great model. And at the time in 1951, lounges weren't really weren't a thing. Uh, it was really predicate on pipe tobacco, gifts, and cigars. And so by 1986, when they sold, they had several hundred franchises across the country. And it proved, you know, it proved that this concept model really does work. Over the years as a consumer myself, and then later a cigar maker, I realized that there was um, a lot of different clubs that were popping up, like the ones that I had been to over the years in New York, from Merchants to Davidoff to um, uh, Cigar Inn and a few others that started popping up. And you started realizing that this lounge sort of element was essential to cigar sales in the retail area. Um, having a growing brand of my own gives me also this great vehicle for me to showcase my product and, uh, and grow fan, you know, fan base, you know, locally. So I wrote the business plan. Um, I was uh, dead set on doing it. Um, I was uh, distributing cigars at a, as a distributor to a, a club called LACC, where Adam was the general manager. And uh, I basically came to Adam and said, hey, listen, I'm gonna, I'm opening my own spot and I really don't wanna compete against you. Uh, wanna, would you be interested in, in participating in some way? That's right. And he goes, well, I'm gonna one up you. I'm gonna introduce you to the, you know, let's, let's get the owner of LACC involved and see if he would be interested in participating as well 
because he, you know, he had a he had LACC for a number of years. It was up and down. You know, there was a lot of, you know, it wasn't a consistent business for him. And, you know, um, I think that he had a, a really strong uh, passion for the club concept. And when I started to explain to him how we can control basically supply chain and how we can help reduce the tax burden in California as a result uh, and see the margin of profit that could be that could be had by bringing product direct that, you know, he saw he, he immediately saw the potential. Um, so we went out and found a great location. Um, and then the pandemic kind of started. By that point, we're in. About two weeks after 30 grand of demolition and a three-year lease being signed, it was, hey guys, two weeks to flatten the curve. Everybody go home, emergency services only. And we kind of took that as a benefit. We're like, okay, great. No traffic in LA for two weeks while we're doing construction. This will be perfect. Let's just keep pushing forward. So, you know, a year later, uh, obviously we're, we're, we are where we are, but uh, I'm very proud to say, not only do we make it to that construction point, have a good soft opening, abiding by to abiding by the code restrictions the entire time um we found ourselves with a model that pat's created that has you know, even in emergency times has kept us in uh in the black so we're very uh, very very proud of that so so you all had a grand opening in april no, no, no. march grand opening was september, september oh, 1st. grand opening was september yeah. 1st yeah. with some okay. soft with some soft hours before then but okay how did that go over mm. What was the reception of the uh, of your fan base or your growing fan base? Really well. We took advantage of the outdoor opportunity, right? Social distancing. We also set the club up in a way um, that we could maintain, obviously, all the rules. Um, in, in California, they're probably just as just as strict as the strictest places in in in, um, in the country. So we had a, we did like twenty five percent capacity, uh, those types of things. But folks were just excited, I think, to get out and see something new. Um, obviously, Pat brings an incredible uh, provenance and a legacy in this industry. He's highly, highly connected. So many people love him and his brand. They're very proud that he's, uh, you know, born and raised in, in L.A., but by coastal New York, L.A. Um, so to come out and support something that Patrick was doing, um, it was good to have a local celebrity on 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 site, right? For to, to be doing the, uh, the the continental. But folks were really excited. Um, we had uh, we had a, we had a great day, and folks wanted to see us survive, right? What, that's one of the things that I'm really um happy with this industry is people want to see brick and mortar survive right a lot of folks are saying today oh brick and mortar get away run away run away we're pushing into the space and i know pat will talk a little bit more about that we highly believe in brick and mortar where things are heading and if you have the right operators the right the right staff the right location and concept people really want to participate and it becomes something that they don't want to have taken away from them right so we'll talk more about that and that's very true. And this, and the cigar industry is all about brick and mortar. Without the brick and mortar, this industry, I truly believe, fails. Because you have to have a place for people to go smoke a cigar, enjoy company of each other. I mean, we went through a pandemic. We went through the Zoom era. It was fun. I enjoyed it. But you know what? I was getting really tired and worn out saying, I need to get out the lounges again. Yeah, and I was absolutely. so happy when I was able to say, I'm free of this bull crap and I'm ready to roll with it. In the design of this lounge, which is absolutely beautiful. And I'll be doing a review of this on Stogie Press. So you'll see all the photos of it. You'll see the look and feel of this lounge. It's, it's unique. Um, had, did you both work on the design? Did you have somebody come in and do the design? How did that work out? Well, yeah. So I have a friend of mine, a big plug to Devin Taylor at Devin Taylor Designs because she's awesome. Um, I went to Devin and I asked her a couple of questions and she gave me some really great feedback. And as a result, um, I had a vi I built a vision. And what I wanted was I wanted something that was like gender neutral and accessible. Uh, the retail area itself is is chic, Art Deco, and clean, just clean. Um, you walk in, you've got light gray colors, you've got white, you've got 
uh, traversing wallpaper. You've got a uh, slate tile floor with our logo, in, you know, um, in the floor. Um, the uh, the seating is comfortable. The room space is bright. Um, it's not dark, dreary, uh, old school tobacco shop design. Um, it definitely uh, attracts a more affluent customer, um, but doesn't. It, it's not unaccessible to blue collar. So exactly, it's uh, exactly. it's it's actually like almost like refreshing, um, and so. Uh, the humidor design um, was predominantly mine. I wanted a, a sort of a New York design between um, adjustable cubbies and um, merchandising shelving for boutiques and other things that we carry inside the humidor. And we, we currently boast about 650 facings with the ability to go about 750. Um, so we're still, you know, we, we've got plenty of room in there for new and upcoming things and uh, uh, and we constantly are looking at new evolving brands. Um, you know, we uh, recently did a Casa de Sueno event, uh, who's a very, very new to the game. Um, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a great event. We had a great time. Um, we had, uh, you know, all hands on deck for that. And that worked out very well for everyone. Um, you know, as far as uh, the decor goes, a lot of the things that went into the design of the space, you know, includes photographs um, of some of my travels, uh, farm, uh, farm photos uh, in Nicaragua, um, uh, pictures of what pilones look like inside the aging barn, um, you know, leaf hanging from the rafters, uh, sort of all the things that encompass, you know, cigars and cigar making in general. Uh, above us is the only sort of non-agriculturally uh, based product, which is uh, Winston Churchill with a Churchill and a Tommy gun. Uh, I created that whole concept right there because uh, what's a cigar club without Winston Churchill in it? At least some picture of the guy. Uh, incidentally, you'll find one in our bathroom too. Any thoughts, Adam? Yeah, you know, the, the concept of the Continental was something that was going to have some mystique, some mysterious. So we wanted to have a very open and inviting cigar lounge for new smokers, for those that were coming through town. We wanted to be able to welcome them in. And we were able to do a lot of wild experimentation at LACC just to see what would work out here in the industry. Um, I had a lot of limitations over there as, as far as space is concerned, parking is concerned. Um, humidor size is concerned, um, but one of the really fun things that we were able to do was test this wild idea of a 24-hour member lounge, right? So we 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 came on we came on um, uh, came to the market um, for about a year and a half, tested that out, and people had an incredible taste for it. Um, so basically, having a controlled access system allowing our exclusive members access before and after membership hours or before before and after retail hours. Um, became something that we were just very, very well known for. And we wanted to bring that over to this lounge. So, um, I'm so I'm so happy that we were able to create a full retail lounge, right? Retail experience where people can come and buy one cigar, stay and smoke, be treated as a, as a, as a distinguished guest. But then we have a secondary private members lounge, which is 24 hours. So we're seeing some other people looking at that concept right now. We're really excited to be, uh, you know, kind of be in the watershed moment of the whole 24 hour club experience. And we're sitting actually in the members only lounge. We're sitting at one of the two poker tables that are here. So they do have, uh, they can play poker tournaments in here. They're going to have fun. Um, there are three big screen TVs across from us, a nice sitting area of chairs and tables and ashtrays all around. Um, and then another sitting area behind that with some couches. Um, one of the things about this, and I have to, I, I, and as I'm doing this, and I, I met Adam the other day, and I'm, I'm now I'm looking at him actually on the screen. And as we said, Continental Cigar Club, kind of John Wickish. So there's a couple of things about this lounge. Number one, when you, you're a member here, you get a gold coin. So when you come in the lounge, you got the gold coin. That's kind of your passport into this part of the lounge. Another thing I want to note is, Adam, 
you kind of look like John Wick. <laughs> yeah, we, we've gotten it from time to time. You know, we may find a uh, an artist or something to kind of superimpose my face over that 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 famous uh, picture, John Wick, with all the guns pointing at him. We want to maybe point, you know, a couple hundred cigars at me, something like that. But uh, we've had fun with that in the past. One of the thing, interesting things about the uh, the coin is we wanted something. We we wanted a we wanted a currency business card that wasn't a business card. You know, um, business cards get stuck in wallets and billfolds and, and, uh, or just thrown away. And in this case, I designed this coin that has both the address and our hours of operation on one side, the logo to the Continental on the other side. And essentially, we use that coin for a couple of different reasons. One is uh, we give that coin out to people that we meet out in the world that are avid cigar smokers that, that are maybe visiting LA or are in, L in LA and aren't aware of who we are, uh, that might be you know, potentially a good member. And so we give that coin to them and, and they can bring that coin into the Continental and exchange it for one of our house cigars and an opportunity to smoke that cigar in our private lounge. It's a one-off. It's, it's one of our abilities to you know, extend a courtesy uh, have a guy have a nice experience, see if this is the type of place that he'd like to be a member of. As far as our memberships are concerned, we are a little bit, you know, I don't know what the word is. Picky choosy. Picky choosy might be the <laughs> word. Yeah. Um, you know, there is uh, a dress code. One of the things that we. Uh, there is a waiting list. Yes, there is. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can go to our website the Continental Cigar Club LA.com. Look for membership, click on that, put your membership application in. We review every application. We ask applicants to at least attend to at least one of our cigar events. And right now the cigar event that is become most popular and one when we do every single month is called the Continental Breakfast. And what that is 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 I've paired a cigar, some sort of breakfast bite, pastry, something like that with an espresso coffee of some kind um, in a harmonic pairing. And what's nice about that is, is it's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's, I don't know how many morning events anyone has ever been to, but this type of morning event is so much fun. Coffee, cigar, something to eat, um, chit-chatting about the cigar and the pairing. Um, it's, it is a lot of education. Um, we have a Invented flavor wheel um, that we that we give every person who arrives at one of our events, mm -hmm. but having a prospective yeah. member come to our events gives us an opportunity to get to know them, and for them to get to know us because the personalities that are in a cigar club is what makes a cigar club special, and every demographic is going to have different personalities, and a different different socioeconomic background, a different social background, different employment background, right. and yep. it offers people an opportunity to meet people you might not have never met, or gives another person an opportunity to meet people that are like you in some ways. And, you know, sharing the one thing that all of us share is a passion and love for that, right? So true, Pat. Yeah. Um, our motto, one of our mottos is folium diamantis, mm -hmm. which is Latin for lovers of the leaf. Um, our second motto is cigars and civility, which is what we pride ourselves on, cigars and civility, bringing a sort of civility to both our lounge and our retail environment and how our tobacconists here treat customers. Absolutely. That's the biggest part. Such a passion for that. When, when, a, when a person comes into our retail location, they're greeted by someone immediately. Um, they're usually asked their name. They're welcomed into the humidor, there uh, oftentimes uh, lots of questions are being asked. You know, what kinds of coffees do you like drinking? What cigars have you tried in the past? What sort of pairings have you had? Trying to get an idea of where a customer's palate range might be so that we can recommend cigars to them that they're gonna love. And that has been the biggest part of our selling point here at the Continental is the fact that people can come in and have this great experience with a salesperson who's not trying to upsell them on everything, who's right. really tailoring the cigar to who they are, 
and it's just creating loyalty in a big yeah. way. Yeah, breaking stereotypes at the at the end of the day. You know, going into a place that sells cigars and trying to find one out of 650 that you might enjoy without having a terrible experience, right? It's just rolling the dice. So Pat calls it the hand selling experience. I'm actually born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. I have a lot of Southern sensibilities and the whole Southern charm and, you know, treat people like you want to be treated. Um, that's something that I like to bring to the table. So we have a hand selling experience and you know what? We don't let our humidor get crowded with people. We'll have a little line outside because we want to have one customer in the humidor at a time. So the way they can have their entire experience of buying a cigar, if it takes a minute, that's fine. If it takes, if it takes uh, I know, a few more minutes, that's okay too. We invite the new cigar smokers to come in here and be provided with a, a, a really fantastic level of education. We want to bust down those doors that this is an intimidating thing to do, right? We really want to do that. And that's why we invest in all of our employees and bring them up to a cigar tobacconist certification um, so in order to be a part of the Continental Cigar Club to work here, you have to be a certified tobacconist. So really proud that uh, Pat has instituted that here at the club. And that's important because when you walk into the retail section of this lounge, there is a plaque <clears throat> of all the certificates of the tobacconists. So you know that these, every person that works here is trained. And I've met three, maybe four, three of them already, I believe, since I've been here. And I can attest that they know what they're talking about. If you have a palate that you don't find a cigar on the shelf that you're familiar with, you just talk to them about it and they will find something that will come close to what you like and maybe even help you expand your palate to things and teach you. We just had a, a, a patron come in today who's, he doesn't really smoke cigars that often. He, He's like, well, how do you really, you know, I, I, I smoked them at a, at a friend's party, but how, how do you cut it? And they took the time. They walked him through, showed him how to cut it, showed him how to light it, okay? Showed him how to smoke it. You know, take take those slow puffs. Don't don't rush it. Don't smoke it like a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed. I said, you, you don't always get that. You get, you know, this is a <laughs> very personal touch type of retail operation. When you come in here and you want to be part of a membership, um, I'll let maybe Patrick talk about what is the cost of the membership and what are the benefits of being a member of the Continental Cigar Club? I think the biggest benefit is the fraternity. Um, you know, it's not, as I said, it's, it's gender fluid. So, I mean, we encourage women to join as much as we encourage men. And um, one of the things I think that the most important aspect of any lounge is the camaraderie aspect, building relationships, right? But as far as the cost of joining, our general membership cost is $1,750 a year. And what that includes is a $250 credit in the humidor that can be used anytime. Um, it rolls over year to year if you don't use it. Um, it offers you a locker that is uh, holds about five boxes or so. Um, we have um, larger boxes that we call an upgrade box. So if you'd like an upgrade box in addition to your standard size box, an additional 750 a year. Um, you have 10% off all purchases in-house. You have 15% off boxes. You have free continental breakfasts and discounts on cut and light events and other larger events. And, and the cut and light events and larger events for us incorporate when it's not a pandemic, um, typically a liquor of some kind, a food product of some kind. We use an outside catering company that comes in and takes care of all that. And so, you know, we ask people to help us on the expense of those things, but we typically, you know, those happen once a quarter. Um, Additional benefits and probably the most important additional benefit is, is reciprocal right in any other continental in the country. Um, we are actively seeking partnerships. We're looking to expand. We have uh, locations that we would love to do locations all over the country. We have a pair of locations in New York that we're presently working on, uh, Palm Desert, um, downtown Los Angeles, New Mexico, Colorado, Las Vegas, Chicago, 
uh, Florida. We are we think that this particular type of concept would just be fire all over the country, especially from the concept of reciprocal right, because then it becomes you're part of the continental family. That's right. Um, you know, one of the concepts I have and I always had since day one is creating a boutique hotel that's private to continental members only. Um, that might be really great for Las Vegas, for instance, uh, you know, with a gaming license, oh, that would be great. Um, you know, but conceptually, the idea is, is to, you know, bring in as many continental memberships as possible, build ourselves in all of these markets, and then eventually take the company public. And that's a, that's a business design that's in our master, you know, our master deck sheet um, that would then include franchising thereafter. Um, we see this as a long-term investment for us. Um, you know, uh, David Mamet said once that, you know, if you have something to fall back on, you typically will. I make cigars and this is my business. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about cigars now. Now, in California, as you all know, this is a high tax state. <clears throat> it can be punishing taxes. Cigars that you see on the shelf here tend to have a much higher price than you'll find in a place like Florida with no taxes. But I'm going to tell you something. These two gentlemen have solved a piece of that problem because they have a, they have a house blend, three different blends. I'm smoking one right now. What did you tell me? Is it $8? $8.50 for the Toro for a Toro that right now is flavorful. It's got a beautiful burn on it. And I'm enjoying this cigar for eight fifty. So if you come in and you, and you don't want to spend that extra money, they have these outstanding house blends. And this comes because Patrick, besides being a partner in this lounge, Patrick is also the owner of Tobac Trading Company. So he knows cigars very well. He manufactures cigars. He's the, he, he goes down in Nicaragua. He goes, he goes down and works on the blends. He, he's actually, he's like a chef, okay? He's like a, he's like a mad scientist with his blends. If you see any of the blends and things that I've talked about on my site, you'll understand. And this represents a little bit of that. Okay, for eight fifty. Now, Patrick, let's talk a little bit about Tobacco Trading Company because you do feature those in in this shop, and you are you turned me on to something this week, new blend called Milk and Honey. Now, if anybody's going to TPE that's watching this, check out Tobacco Trading Company's booth. What's the number? 2026. Grab one of those boxes there. There are three blends of the milk and honey. And this cigar is pretty spectacular. And if you like that, you get that nice honey note, you're going to get it in this. So, Patrick, talk a little bit about milk and honey and a little bit about Tobacco Trading Company for those that may not be familiar with you. I know you're on my show last year, but Maybe people didn't all watch it. I'll make a nod here. One of fewer than 20 master tobacconists in the world. So got to, got to give Pat the master tobacconist credit as well. And thank God for tobacconist university. Otherwise, you know, um, it is, uh, it's been, it's been a pleasure to be part of that family and, uh, and to become, you know, hold that, hold that level of, of, uh, Education. Um, so, Tobacco Trading Company. Uh, you know, I've gotten asked over the years, like it's such a generic name. Like, why not? Why? Why so generic? Tobacco Cigar you know, Trading Company. Well, it's tobacco. As I explained to him, tobacco is short for for tobacco nicotina, which is the actual agricultural name for cigars. I wanted it to keep it generalized because I want to create. That's really where I come from. I want to be A to Z 
I want to be a 180 degree departure from the last thing I did, even if it's in the same line. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of, of sitting down with someone for a very long eight hour dinner once uh, in Nicaragua who uh, talked about cigar weenies and uh, guys that blend for the public versus blending for themselves. And, uh, you know, those that, that uh, you know, create so many different lines within their brand that any one of those lines could be its own brand. And, you know, I come from a perspective because I'm really, I'm not a big company, I'm a micro boutique. There's just me. Um, I do my own marketing, I do my own packaging, I do blending, I roll. Um, I, I'm in Nicaragua post pre-pandemic five times a year. Um, you know, I'm actively involved in farm to factory. Um, I spend an incredible amount of time um, learning and researching and experimenting. And, you know, what I have found is, is I've brought a prior education into this business and it's serving me very well. Um, I'm very pleased with the work that I, that I produced. Um, a lot of the things that I started with um, coming out um, is super obscure, but very accessible, oddly enough, right? And almost kind of gimmicky is what I was told, which was uh, a Mustra D to back um, double footed perfecto uh, that you could literally smoke from either direction. Um, the, the centerpiece of the cigar is the binder and the two wrappers. So the concept was, was having sort of a, a dumbed down filler model wrapped in something really like bound with something really pronounced like in the double Clara Habano, San Andreas Broadleaf before San Andreas Broadleaf was really a thing. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I wrapped one side of that cigar in double Clara, which a lot of people call Candela. And then I wrapped the other side of that cigar in Ecuadorian 2000 Habano. And what I got is a gorgeous taste from the Candela side. It brings incredible sweetness and like grassy hay and all these unique tastes mixed in with the San Andreas. And then you flip it around and smoke the other side with, an, you know, take another cigar and smoke from the Habano side and you get all that chocolate and leather and and cocoa and all those wonderful notes that come from that side. And so what a great opportunity. You can have two cigars and get two different experiences from the same design cigar for the most part. And so what I did is I originally conceptualized five different blends of that concept. Um, and, uh, but I, I settled with three. I settled with the three most contrasting designs. So it was a um, double Clara Habano, a Pennsylvania, Connecticut, a Pennsylvania Broadleaf and Connecticut with a Habano binder, uh, and then a Brazilian Matafina, Indonesian Sumatra with a Cameroon binder. Mm. A coup de gras. It really is a coup de gras. <laughs> I get a lot of compliments on that cigar. It's probably the most expensive of those three that I make, um, but it's worth it to maintain the price point across the board. Um, it's super popular. It comes in a 45 count display box with refillable bundles of 15 counts. Um, next up was CCR. I wanted something that really fit the American palette. Um, it wasn't, uh, the, Los Angeles in particular is, is rather Cuban centric um, in comparison to a lot of places in the country. And, uh, and, and, and with that Cuban palette comes sort of an inability to, to really enjoy or understand Lajero. Very true. Um, there is, uh, uh, and everyone here smokes in their mouth and, you know, throat spice, not so much nasal retro hailing. Uh, and so I wanted to, to create a cigar that really challenged that cigar smoker. And, uh, and so CCR is made without Lajero. It has very strong viso, very strong seco, great binder, great wrapper. Um, you'll see all kinds, if you do any research on it, you'll find all kinds of potential blend possibilities because I just haven't been clear with anybody about what it really is. Mm. Um, I just want people to experience the cigar 
Um, and those that retro hail will get something very special. Very special. Um, along the way, uh, I collaborated with Ernesto Carrillo to create Hoy Vivo, uh, which was basically my Cuban killer. Um, it's got seven-year-old wrapper. It's got five-year-old aged tobaccos inside. Um, it's mostly Nicaraguan, although it was rolled and manufactured in the Dominican Republic. Um, it offers an incredibly desirable palette for the Habano lover. Mm. Um, if you're a Magnum 56 Upman kind of guy, oh, exactly. you are going to love Hoy Vivo, yeah. no question. Um, the, it's also the most expensive cigar that I make to date. It's, uh, it retails for 18 um, CACR is about 12. Uh, the trifectas are also about 12. Um, and then, um, you know, I had this moment where I was like, and don't get me wrong, I smoke Cuban. I smoke everything in the, under the sun. I, I, I've smoked every cigar in our humidor. Um, I know every manufacturer in there. Um, I can tell you point blank what things, you know, what my experience of those flavors are um, in a pretty strong, art articulate way. And, um, and one of the things that I really enjoyed for a lot of years was a Romeo and Juliet wide Churchill in the morning with a mm. cup of coffee. It just was a great go-to. It's super mild, but it's got a little spice in the palate. It's not overwhelming. Um, it pairs great with coffee. And I'm like, I really want a Connecticut for myself. Like I really just want something that, that speaks to that same sort of notion. And so I, uh, you know, I sat down and I, I, I just said, you know, to the factory, I was like, I, I want a, I want a 50 by five uh, Robusto, um, you know, uh, Connecticut wrapper and um, yeah, there it is. Look at that thing. That's just, so I, I did some other things. Um, I drank Pilon Cuban coffee every time I tried a sample of this cigar. Um, it was the, the exact experience because I wanted to pair it directly with the coffee. That was my whole intention. It's designed to be this. Every morning should be this amazing. Okay. I want everyone. That's why I made a 30 count box so that you buy a box and you smoke one every morning for the month. Um, so I did some things, right? Um, the first batch, it was good, wasn't great. Um, it was mild, had some pepper. Um, the Connecticut was a single Connecticut. And I found a couple of times that the, that the wrapper broke and like seamed up and, you know, split and had that problem. And I, I, hate, I hate when a Connecticut splits. It's probably the worst thing in the world. Um, what, I mean, what a failure in construction, you know I mean? That kind of thing, but it's really the leaf. It's like, you can't really, you know, it, it, you can't fault a super thin leaf. It's just difficult, you know? And especially when you have binders and filler that expands with humidity, mm -hmm. you're going to guarantee break that cigar. And so I was like, well, we're going to definitely do a, a double Connecticut. We're going to, we're going to bind this thing twice to prevent that from happening. And then the binder, I was like, you know, I think there's something we could do to the binder. I don't want to mess with the fillers because I really love the fillers so much. So I was like, let's re-ferment the binder. Mm. And so Guillermo Peña was like, well, what do you want to, what, what, you know, what do you want to ferment it with? <laughs> and I said, I want to do classic Cuban fermentation. Mm. Now he being from Las Villas, um, Cuba, where, you know, Santa Clara region, I mean, they ferment all their tobacco and honey water. That's mm -hmm. their deal, right? Um, and so he was like, we, we, well, we could do honey water. And I said, all right, let's do honey water. Yeah. But let's increase the dilution of honey to water mm. a little more. Mm -hmm. Let's just do a little bit more. And so uh, we did a little bit more. And I could pick it up. He could pick it up. But we gave it to someone else who couldn't pick it up. Um, and it's just because my palate's super refined, his palate's super, super refined. So like we could taste it, but the layman, the, 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 the guy that doesn't smoke with the same sort of distinction couldn't taste it. So we did it again. And we went through it a couple of times till we found the right amount. Mm -hmm. Dried, cured, aged, 
found, uh, sits up on the shelf for you know 90 days minimum. And what we produced was milk and honey. Mm -hmm. This cigar, undoubtedly, you smell it, you lick it, you smell the cap, you do any of that. There's you no, you there's, smoke there, that. there's, you don't give that to me. <laughs> there, there's there's no there's no sweetness zero sweetness hold on let me yeah, Pat's, uh, Pat's gonna smoke go. that one yeah that's that's going back uh, in Pat's pocket you know this thing you can't smell sweetness it's not like anything else in the market where right. you can actually smell sweetness or you taste it on your lips there's like sweet tipped right, or right. something like that um, or there's some sort of artificial thing going on there's none of that but when you light this cigar and you 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 toast it up nice and you give a couple of draws. In the back of the palate, and the sweetness of the palate, the back of the palate, all of a sudden you start tasting this kind of sweet sure do. Uh, smoke. Yeah, you know? yeah, you absolutely do. And I liken it to the, the drop of water in a scotch, how it completely transforms and opens up the scotch. The particular honey that is being used in this blend for the fermentation, the level of that you know, you can smoke a cigar that hasn't been fermented in this way. You smoke the cigar, the, the milk and honey itself, and you go, what changed? What was different? Why did this open up so much? So, you know, we do have a really big trend in infused cigars in the market. You know, to those out there that enjoy the, the infused cigars, hey, no shame in that. Smoke what you like, smoke what you're comfortable with. This is not something that has been painted with honey on the outside to give you some artificial mind trick, right? It hasn't been added with any like, you know, uh, essential oils, anything like that. No artificial sweeteners at all. And, and, and we've seen a lot of people kind of getting back to that classic like sugar dipped tip, right? I know Steve Saka has a cigar out where he has a, a little bit of a sugar dipped tip perhaps. So we are finding some incredible honey and open honey notes without having to give you that um, faked palate to taste so to yeah. have that all come through in the smoke is something pretty sensational and i think that's what's what's got people going why is this so different and why do i have to smoke one tomorrow i have to tell you i smoked two of these already and he's spot on i i just i'm in love with this cigar right now um i'm, I'm looking forward to taking a moment and just sitting back at home total solitude and really take it all in it's, I'm really, it burned beautifully. So we'll, we'll see how it all comes out when I do it. But man, right now I'm, I'm pretty stoked up about this. Now you also took this Patrick and you did your mad scientist thing. Mm -hmm. um, you, you kind of, you kind of added two more blends to the line. So mm -hmm. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about these other blends and they too have, Honey notes in it. You could definitely pick that up. And the, so I'm going to let Patrick walk through this. Now, mind you, one of the things he's going to show you right now, and I'll just explain this. I, I'm beginning to nickname Patrick the Prince of Candela. Okay. <laughs> because it's Patrick really loves Candela leaf. And a lot of his cigars, you're going to find Candela either on a wrapper or you're going to find it in the filler, you're in a binder. There's Candela floating around in a lot of his cigars, and he does that for a reason. And I think you're going to hear about it right now. And also, Pat, tell us about some of those um, uh, chef experiences that lead you to your decisions for these, these, these flavors of leaves. So, um, yes, I, I, I'm a big fan of Double Claro. Um, and I will give huge props to Simon Camacho because his cigar in the you know 40s 50s were double clara candela they were the u.s most popular cigar at one time mm. and uh you know there's a reason because it, it's it's got a very mild flavor and it's super accessible to just about anybody and um it does add some unique notes that um could resemble uh, green tea could resemble grassiness and hay and um, and sort of the sort of green leafy uh, tastes. Um, the, the reason for candela for me is that um, it's an underutilized leaf. 
in my opinion. Yes, there's a lot of guys that have one-offs. Um, you know, like Illusion has the 88, um, you know, Lance, um, the Robusto, and the Triple Eight. Um, Rocky's got a Candela. Um, uh, Romacraft has the Fomorian. Um, you've got um, Alec Bradley. You've got, um, uh, I believe, Sokka is coming out with a double Claro as well. Uh, it may not have hit yet. Um, there's, uh, I, you know, I feel like every brand has one. It's kind of like the Culebra. Every brand seems to have one Culebra. Um, and, and what I've noticed in using Candela in certain blends is that it helps to offset crazy pepper and crazy spice that is inherent in some of the Lajeras that we use. Because one of the things for me is about smooth taste. Mm. Um, I want a smooth tobacco experience. I don't like rough tobacco. Like I don't like some Dominicans that like tear up my palate. I don't like that, that are just big old pepper bombs and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, I chefing wise come from, you know, uh, a classic French, you know, cuisine background uh, where I enjoy consomme and a consomme is incredibly flavorful if you have the right consomme because there's 27 different things that flavored the chicken broth. I mean, it becomes a, you know, I mean, it could just be, and lobster bisque and a lot of the varieties of things out there that you eat that are super powerful in flavor, but they're super clean uh, in their preparation, you know? And so um, I like using Candela not only as a wrapper, but also as a binder. And I also like using it as a filler. And I do that in a line of cigars that I call the unknown. Um, I've got three different sizes of the unknown. I started at the 70 ring gauge size as the, big, as the first cigar that I produced in that line. And then I blended down to a 60 and farther down to a 44 by seven Lancero, okay? Not to be confused by a Lonsdale, which I'm sure many people are gonna try to recorrect me. And they said it could not be done. And it said it could not they be done. They said it could not be uh, done, yeah. nine leaves. Yeah, so the 70 um, unknown has nine leaves in it. Um, nine separate leaves, whole leaves without the veins. The, the 60 Robusto is nine half leaves and the Lancero is quarter leaves. Um, now, of course, we all know that the Lanceros in general, just because of the small diameter um, and the, in the larger surface area of the wrapper is going to produce a stronger, more um, delineated smoke. And that's what this does. There's no question that the um, that the Lancero version of the unknown is stronger than the other two, but the other two are pretty strong. What happens in that cigar is because of the candela in the filler and on the binder, it helps to offset a lot of the heavy pepper and the heavy spice, making for a very elegant smoke, but still very strong. Um, it's definitely classified full body. Um, so what I decided to do in the milk and honey line was I wanted something um, that I tasted in the unknown was I taste, at times I taste a little bit of um, green tea, sort of a green tea flavor. And I get a little green tea flavor in the uh, double-footed Perfecto as well, in the, in the double Claro Habano uh, Perfecto, a little bit. It's not pronounced, I can taste it, but it's super enjoyable when I do taste it. So I wanted something that was, and since this is a breakfast thing to begin with, I wanted like a nice contrast to a Connecticut and putting on a double candela wrapper over similar fillers as the Connecticut with a tiny bit more Lajero, just a tiny bit, um, has made for a medium candela, which I think is really palatable, especially for the morning. Um, this cigar is Vibrant, green, you know, it is, um, it is double, uh, double wrappered. Um, it is um, 
such a pleasure to smoke. I got to tell you, it's just, uh, it's one of those things. It's just, um, uh, it's just a great contrast and, and, and it holds its own. Um, one of the events that we'll be doing with the cigar is in fact a matcha green tea Japanese um, breakfast event where we're gonna have this, the classic, you know, uh, brush that, you know, does the, the yeah, first- The whisk, yeah. The whisk and, you know, doing green tea with some uh, classic Japanese, you know, breakfast pastry. And, uh, and that's, the, that's what one of our events is be. So in, in developing this, I realized also that there are so many Maduro, Oscuro, full body cigar smokers and they don't really smoke anything else. And for, you, for them to even consider trying a Connecticut is like a crazy idea. They think I've graduated, right? There's that mentality out there. Totally, totally. Once you, once I you don't get to Oscuro, you anymore. just don't go back. Exactly. I don't smoke Connecticut because that's for guys that don't have a palate and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, so here's what, here's what I did. I thought, you know what? I'm going to create a Maduro version of this cigar, but I'm going to do it in a very particular way. It is, it's what I'm smoking right now. It's called black sugar because I don't know if you can see that, but it looks pretty much black to me. Um, I'm using a super dark San Andreas broadleaf wrapper over the same binder as all the other three cigars and a slightly different filler mix and more Lajero or double the Lajero from the Connecticut. Um, and what I get from this cigar with the combination is, is I get a medium full flavor but that's so smooth, blends extremely well with coffee in the morning. Um, now you can drink your coffee a bit stronger and do a bit more with that. And for every Maduro smoker out there that likes full body, this is the cigar that you can have that will pair with your coffee straight black, double espresso, you know, um, mocha pot, pilon, you know, no sugar, Turkish, Lebanese coffee, and you will just be in heaven. I and promise. I can admit that I had that cigar yesterday. Patrick had to run some errands, and he says, here, have this one. And he made me a nice espresso. And I was like, why are you giving me this thing? This is like an after-dinner cigar. He goes, no! He says, smoke it now. You'll." And I'm like, okay. And I fired it up, but I was getting ready to be blown away and say, man, I told you it was a full belly kind of cigar. It was magnificent. Just smooth, tasty, had that honey note, but it was, like he said, it was black sugar. It was almost more of a, um, a, to a toasted or, or, or burnt honey, if I can say it like almost that. Like a molasses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like like, like, like a, a mild bootstrap. Now. Yes, exactly. Almost like a molasses, and it went it went great with that coffee. And I drink my coffee black. Um, but if you drink it with a if you a real Cuban coffee would be incredible with this cigar. So, but so those are the milk and honeys. Um, one of the things that we talked about in the beginning of the show is that. Patrick is uh, getting ready to go to TPE and I'm going to be driving out there with him. And I'm going to tell you, I've had a tremendous experience here at the Continental Cigar Lounge, hanging out with you all this past couple of days, um, eating dinners and smoking cigars. But I had a better experience because I am watching what it really takes, the pain, the suffering, the tribulations to put together the trade show. And I could tell you, Patrick has been stressed out and I'm being his, the best wingman I can to calm him down throughout every hour of the day to something's not there. Don't worry. It'll be there. What's your next thing on the punch list? Let's go take care of that. We, he, didn't get, he didn't get the truck. He had to get a different truck. This thing happened. That, it, it's just nonstop issues. So hopefully Tuesday we show up get into Vegas somewhere around noon, and then I'm going to be watching the setup also. So I'm going through the whole process here on what it takes for a brand owner to actually host 
the show in a booth. He has his own booth, and it's going to be great. And I'm going to tell you what, Patrick, this is the first time you've done the TPE or any trade show like this for cigars. What's your experience been like? Tell people how excited you are about it. Excitement. I want to see excitement. <laughs> Excitement, yes. Um, let me, um, let me, let me. Without let, throwing FedEx under the bus. Let, let me, yeah, no doubt. Uh, little, little shout out to Mr. Shaw at uh, Banner Buzz for making sure my backdrop actually got delivered. Uh, I, uh, so as I said before, I'm a micro boutique. I'm just one guy. And uh, I produce my cigars with a lot of thought. And, um, and I have to do it that way because I don't have unlimited money. And, uh, you know, I have to be very smart about every detail of everything. And as far as making cigars goes, pretty good at that. Um, but this is, this is my first trade show ever. Um, first time I've ever decided to go like public with it. Now I've, of course, I'm, I have 60 accounts between here and New York, but um, you know, those are getting in the car, driving, you know, shaking hands with people, um, you know, uh, uh, creating friendships and relationships and, um, and of course, pr providing them with a cigar that's substantially as, as good as I say it is. And, um, and so the, the, the warning is, is that if you ever thought about doing this, um, uh, don't, <laughs> um, the, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot of hidden things in doing this. Like, you don't hear about. Okay, so yeah, my booth cost me, you know, um, a few thousand dollars, but it's not just the cost of the booth. Now it's the furnishing of the booth. Then it's the the cost of furnishing the booth. Then it's the um, the Teamsters and the oh, yeah. the wow. the convention um, uh, outfitters that charge you for power and charge you for uh, cartage and charge you you can't you you have to carry things in. You can't use uh, wheel carts. You um, by the time it's all said and done, you have have paid almost two times what your booth cost costed you, um, and that was uh, a, a, you know it's a, it's a hit. You know that that extra that extra three thousand dollars could go to manufacturing product. Um, you know, uh, setting up, uh, getting you know, um, making sure that your lines there, designing your booth is traumatic. Um, especially on the cheap. I mean, it's like, it's, there's so many companies out there that are charging three to $5,000 for a setup and et cetera. And then that's all you get. You don't get to keep that thing afterwards. It's, it's, you know, it's not like it's depreciable. It's over. And so, you know, for me, it's like, I'm just trying to think of like the smart, easy uh, kind of way. And it's still costing me a bucket load of money. And, um, and I'm, so I'm going out there with um, a lot of optimism um, despite being stressed out, which I am, it's because, you know, I'm a detail guy. I, I want to make sure the details are there and I want to make sure that I, I present, um, a, my brand in a way that's accessible to people. That's friendly. That's, uh, interesting that, um, that, you know, guys are going to want to, you know, not only, you know, come in and want to smoke the cigar, but maybe hang out and smoke a cigar. Um, you know, I am um, the, the, the owner of the factory that I, I, pr I produce at, Guillermo Pena. He's flying in to support me at the event. I've got friends of mine from New York that are flying in to support me for the event. I got friends from LA coming in to support me for the event. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I got, I got, you know, Jimmy here who, like, what the fuck? I mean, I, I, who am I? I'm so small. This guy comes from Florida fucking to hang out and like help me and, and promote all this. And, you know, I'm super grateful for that. Um, you know, watching, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big, it's a big crap shoot to some extent. I, I don't know what to expect. Um, uh, I'm going to set up a table. I'm going to roll cigars while I'm a TPE on top of everything else. Um, because, um, you know, I'm passionate about that. Guillermo Pena is going to roll with me. Um, you know, yeah. we're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to hopefully have a really fun, because if I keep it fun, then there's no stress, right? Um, a lot of my, pers a lot of my internal philosophy for everything I do is based on a very simple concept, which is kind of hard to pull off sometimes, which is do the footwork 
and stay out of the results. If you go out and you do the best you can, you got to mentally stay out of the results and just let the chips fall where they may. And, uh, you know, and I've been growing success over time with that concept. And so, you know, for me, I'm, I'm extremely loyal to my fan base. I'm extremely, um, you know, all of my vendors, like all of my shops that I sell to, um, I, I try to do events as regularly as possible. Um, I try to give them as much support as I can. Um, you know, the pandemic has been really shit for everybody. Um, but, you know, I've gone out and, and done events at Embargo during the, during, uh, in Phoenix, uh, during the, during the, the pandemic, um, you know, um, and I'm, you know, like I tell you, uh, I'm willing to go anywhere to promote my, my product, to stand by it, to help, you know, retailers sell, um, be there to, you know, uh, meet people. Um, and grow, you know, your curiosity for my brand. What can I tell you? I mean, it just, it is what it is. So, so Patrick and, and, and Adam, uh, th thank you uh, for your hospitality um, for the last couple of days. Um, I'm looking forward to everybody at TPE. Please come by and visit uh, to back trading company. I trust me. You'll have an experience there. Like Patrick said, with, with him rolling and Gamble rolling experiencing his craft, having a conversation with him. He has so much, there's so much more to unwrap. We don't have the time on this show to do it. If you're at TP, you'll, you'll, you'll get it all. I'll just close on this. Um, one last thing I'd like to just, I think you'd want to shout it out to Patrick and, and Adam is they are also big law enforcement supporters. Patrick comes has kind of a background in that. We won't talk much about it, I'm sure, but he has another cigar. We'll talk briefly about it. We don't have the box here right now, but um, this is a special project you did. And um, why don't you give a little shout out about that? So I have a um, very close friend who, uh, um, well, quite frankly, he is the U.S. Marshal for the Southern District of New York. And uh, he uh, was appointed that position in 2019 and, and has uh, taken on a, a huge responsibility and done extremely well considering so many uh, crazy moments for, for him in that role. And, you know, I, um, I, I love the guy so much and I, I, you know, just really, you know, have tried to support him the best I can as a friend. Um, what I uh, what I decided to do was um, create a product called the Marshall. Um, it's a uh, 20 count uh, box that has a uh, coin um, on the front of the wrapper of the of the ring, and on the sides of the ring is the thin blue line with the American flag. Um, the box is blue. Um, it states it has a a, a logo that I created that embodies the U.S. Marshal Service. Um, the box is dedicated to the U.S. Marshal Service of the uh, Southern District of New York. Um, and uh, a portion of proceeds goes to the U.S. Marshal um, Families Association. Um, you know, we've got um, a limited number of boxes. Um, they are 100 uh, boxes and they are $250 a box. Um, uh, retail, and um, I'm, what makes the box super special is that I had uh, designed a space in the front of the box to hold the coin that I had made for his, you know, for the for you know, memorializing his role and the U.S. Marshal Service in New York. And so, at the in the very front of the box, and everybody who buys a box also gets the coin. And it's uh, it's front and center on the box. It's a beautiful presentation. Uh, the cigar is a six by sixty, incredibly strong, full body, almost ultra full body cigar wrapped in the most beautiful Pennsylvania broadleaf you've ever seen. Um, I spared very little expense making this. Um, this was a sort of a collaborative effort between Raul Disla. At Nicasa, uh, Joe DiRazal uh, participated in the making of this cigar, and it is uh, 
It is a super special cigar that will be on presentation at the show. All right. So before I give uh, the mic back to Adam to do his last words and Patrick, um, a taking it to the nub show, even an impromptu one would not be a taking it to the nub show without a lightning round. But we're not going to do the multiple question lightning round. You all know what's coming. It's a simple question. Everybody gets this on the show. So, guys, here it is. There's no context to this question. It's a simple answer. Pants, pantsuits, or skirts? Skirts. Skirts. There we go. And I'll tell you, you're in the majority, but... There are some that like the pantsuits because I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a bold, powerful woman that can wear a pantsuit and make it work. Anyway, Adam, we'll start with you. Last thoughts? Just a big shout out to uh, what you're doing over here. Jimmy, thank you so much for gracing us with uh, your time and your presence. A huge blessing. If anybody is interested in the concepts of the Continental Cigar Club that we've talked about today, and you think that this would be a really fun concept for your neck of the woods, we are always having conversations about expansion. So please join us at uh, www.continentalcigarclub.com and uh, take a little bit of a look of, of what it means to bring cigars and civility to your neck of the woods. We would love to start those conversations. Also, uh, shout out for the TPE. Um, Pat will be perhaps throwing a uh, special mm. VIP invite ticket held only private party, all expenses paid by Patrick Potter. So if you happen to go by the booth and uh, drop this plug about the private party, you might find yourself with a uh, ticket to the, um, the, uh, the event, the penthouse, the penthouse event. That's good. So now everybody's going to be looking for that private ticket. So um, that's good shout out. <laughs> Your wallet just got thinner, I think. Um, we'll pass uh, final thoughts, Patrick, and we'll call the show. Um, you know, final thoughts is again, same, you know, Jimmy, thank you so much for uh, coming out and supporting me and supporting the continental. We really appreciate that. Um, you know, the uh, uh, one of the other things is, as uh, Adam was mentioning, you know, uh, you can also visit uh, our franchise website, which is www.cigarsandcivility.com. There's a lot of information there about our expansion and kind of what we want to do uh, and the areas in which we'd like to expand in. Um, as far as TPE is concerned, uh, there is a private party. It is being held on the 13th um, at a location not disclosed. So if you stop by the booth, um, you know, well, if you place an order, you're get, definitely getting in. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's the show. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, remember, this will be up on the YouTube channel in a few weeks once I post-process it. You can always catch this on Facebook Live from now. There, there will be, um, I can assure you when I get home, uh, we will have a Wheel of Wonderfulness that is going to be sponsored by Patrick Potter. And uh, there'll be some goodies there for sure. So uh, tune in for that. That'll be the Saturday after I get back. There is no show next Saturday. I'll be on an airplane flying back to Florida. So we'll catch you a week later on Taking It to the Nub. And we'll have a special guest to be announced. Anyway, thank you again. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Adam. This has been spectacular. I'm having a great time in LA. Got to see my niece today. We went out to lunch. We had a great time with my niece and a fiance. It was a great family experience. You know, we went through some troubles in the beginning of the year and it was just, it was good. It was good to get together with family also. So the whole thing turned out to be a great trip. Thank you everybody again. And we'll catch you on the next show. Enjoy.